Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to look at a Reverend Manta Ray. Let's check it out. So let's just check this thing out. This is the Reverend. And I have Nathan down here today. Nathan, what do you know about these things? Uh, these are some really cool semi-hollow bodies. Uh, the, the body is one and three quarters inches thick, so it's a nice slim uh, semi-hollow. It's not too thick or anything. And what I'm seeing right here, this is not an arch top. Like you said, this is a flat top. Yeah, it's a flat top, and the, uh, the top is a solid maple top. Okay. And then the back, the sides, and the center block are made of Carina. So Reverend Guitars, these things seem like a brand new company. I'm really lucky to have one down here at the store. Um, where are these things made? Uh, so the guitars are made in South Korea at Mer Music. If okay. That's how you pronounce it. Yeah. And uh, then they're sent over to Michigan where they're set up and they're inspected. And then the cool thing about it, if we flip the guitar over on the back okay. of the headstock, the serial number is handwritten on and then it's signed by one of the guys who does all of the inspections for the company so uh, that's not that's like uh, written on the back of the guitar there so it's hand signed which is cool because you know someone actually took the time to go over and look at look uh, look through the guitar and make sure it's playing nice and is set up nice that's very similar to what PRS does where they write the serial number on the back like that that's really cool and then uh, these are some locking tuners on here, which is pretty cool. Makes changing your strings pretty easy. Yeah, I did a string change out yesterday, and, and the guy had locking tuners on his guitar, and it did. I, you know, I got through that really quick. Yeah, and then the really back nice. is just set uh, neck. I see. Yeah, set neck. No, the back is just a solid uh, black finish uh -huh. instead of the sunburst that's on the front. Uh -huh. So if uh, we flip this thing back around, it's got your standard three-way pickup selector on there. Um, the cool thing about these these controls, though, is that we have a volume, a tone, and then a bass contour knob. So what the bass contour does is it's supposed to be able to shift the way that the humbuckers sound uh, to more like a P90 or a single coil. Uh, just offers a bit more range and uh, tonality to the humbuckers. So they put a lot of thought into these pickups. Yeah, these are the these are uh, pickups that are custom made by by Reverend, and it has an HA5 in the neck and an HA5 in the bridge, but each of them are made specifically for the neck and bridge. So mm -hmm. uh, they customized each one to sound better in each position. So they're not just throwing the same pickup in both of those. <laughs> And it also has a treble bleed circuit in there. So whenever you turn down the, the volume, when you roll down the volume on your guitar, it doesn't become dull. Right. It'll that, maintain some of the highs. That's like really important nowadays. I, I don't know why every guitar does not have that. Every guitar should have that feature in it nowadays. Yeah, that's a that's like one of the main things I would say that people do to their guitars if it doesn't have one in there. They just put the treble bleed in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely makes the guitar a lot more usable when you're uh, moving around on that volume knob there. So how many frets mm -hmm. is this thing and what's the fret radius? Uh, this one has 22 frets and it's a 12 inch radius and the neck uh, is described as a medium oval profile. Is so, this uh, like, a, like a Gibson scale length or Fender scale length or what is 24 and a half? Uh, it's 24 and three quarters. Okay. Yeah, so it's a... Uh, That's it's standard very, Gibson scale length, isn't it? It's very comfortable to play. Mm -hmm. The neck is... Uh, the neck feels pretty wide. Uh, it's 43 millimeters at the nut, if I remember correctly. Okay. 
But uh, down here, towards the middle of the neck, uh, definitely feels a bit wider. And uh, if you like a thick neck, uh, this is like a pretty good, uh, pretty good size. It's not. I, the I like what neck, I'm but. seeing right here, where the string isn't like sometimes on tallies. This this high E string is so close to the edge. There's no way you could do any sort of little string bends or anything on there. But there's it looks like there's plenty of plenty of room right there. So I, I like that. Yeah, the neck is definitely set really nicely. Um, it has uh, just a standard two pneumatic and stop tail piece on there. So you don't have to deal with any uh, tremolo or nothing like that. Just your standard stop tail piece. Yep. This thing is a beautiful guitar. You want to play this thing for us a little bit? Yeah, let's play it. All right. Here we go. All right, so we're going to play some stuff through this manta ray. Uh, I'll go through all of the pickup positions. I'll do some stuff with the bass contour and a tone knob and the volume knob. So right now we're on the neck. <laughs> Base contour knob. This is where they rolled all the way up. So I think that's when it's supposed to be sounding most like a humbucker. Uh, if we roll it all the way back, it definitely gets a bit thinner. Uh, so I'm assuming that this is when they say it sounds like a single coil pickup. And uh, you can tell it's not the tone. Uh, it doesn't really affect the tone like a tone knob does because when you roll it all the way back it doesn't get super dark like a tone knob uh, would make it dark so it's definitely uh, a lot different than a standard tone knob would be so that's what it on the bridge I'll roll it all the way back on the neck <laughs> definitely affects the volume quite a bit um, but then again humbuckers usually have a lot more punch to them than a single coil does uh, they're usually a bit hotter so uh, maybe it compensates a little bit of the volume to make it sound a little bit more like a single coil pickup uh, so the tone knob if we roll that one all the way back tone knob on there uh, even when it's rolled back pretty far uh, it's still not too muddy it's just definitely a bit darker um, this one thing that I noticed is even though this is like a semi hollow uh, the tone the it's got the center block that I could see comes almost all the way out to this cutout here it's definitely a thick block in there the guitar has a lot of sustain to it uh, we're playing through a 67 Vibrolux reverb and uh, the volume's only on like two and a half, and it's still got like tons of sustain to it. Normally, you got to crank your amp up pretty loud to get some nice, uh, nice sustain, but this one definitely has it. And uh, the uh, neck very feels thick, and 
just well, resonates. What would you it. estimate the weight of that guitar is? I know you have to just kind of guess. Uh, probably around, I don't know, seven. Okay, that's light then. It's pretty light. Okay. I mean, I've played strats that are way heavier. Right. I've played okay. tellies that are heavier. Obviously, some Les Pauls are like monsters compared to this thing. Nine or ten pounds. Right. Um, but, I mean, just guessing, maybe like around seven and a half, seven. Um, but uh, it definitely plays really awesome. You could get a pretty uh, diverse set of tones out of it. Uh, be good for a player who kind of plays a little bit of everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've definitely heard a bunch of great things about them. They play really cool. Uh, it's really comfortable to play. I like that it has neck binding. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of one of my things. I, I really like guitars that have neck binding. Mm -hmm. um, the funny thing is, is that these ones don't have nibs. But it wasn't refretted or anything. It just... Uh, that's just how they came. Just yeah, that's kind of a Gibson thing to have those nibs on there. 